Hey, Christina. Guess what? What? So it's so ironic we're planning to make this video today because literally like 20 minutes before you called, I got an email asking to do like a video interview for a firm. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> so let's get ready for that, I guess. <laughs> so I guess with Corona times, we're doing video interviews now. So um, it's a bit different, but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, this is perfect then. Let's get started on our video. So... Hey guys, this is Christina Salina, reporting from two parts of the world. So today we're going to talk about some tips when you're going into an interview so you can just be prepared as soon as you get there. So today we're going to talk about the steps for preparing an interview and what to bring and some tips for during the interview, which we've included some questions that were, are like common questions that they ask on an architecture interview or a designer position interview. and. Then we'll talk about the after interview. Make sure to stick around to the end because we're going to talk about some mistakes that we've personally made um, and we kind of wish we would have done better. So there's a lot of preparation uh, before an interview just so that you are ready and confident and you know what you're talking about. Uh, so to research, like one of the first things that I do is to research the company, like look up their website, look up any like awards or anything that they're featured in maybe. Because that's something that they are proud of and that they know that, you know, like people, people have like heard of it and know about it. So, so research the company, figure out like what projects they do, you know, and pick like a couple projects that you like that you would talk about, that you could talk about and let them know that, you know, you research them. And also it's important to identify the type of work the company does so that you can cater your portfolio to, to what they do, right? So, I mean, if, for example, like if a company is known to do like hospitals, then I'm not sure that they would care too much about like your residential, like small residential experiences. Um, so unless that's all you have, then you gotta work with it and you gotta own it and you gotta sell it. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that one of the common mistakes that people make is to not prepare questions for the company. And like, you have to remember that I understand that this is an interview for you to get the job, but this is like, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. So it's important to lay out some things that you want to know about them. It could even be like what your daily day would look like. Yeah, and it could also be like fake questions because for my last interview, they were like, do you have any questions for us? And in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, I stalked this firm so hard. I don't have any questions, but just think of like a few that you can ask anyways. And, you know, or like just say, oh, I well, I saw this and this on your website. Is there anything else that um, you could add or something, you know? So when you go to an interview, I like to be over prepared. Um, so... I have like this huge bag um, and I do suggest that if you're a guy I would buy like a small briefcase or a portfolio or something because I think it just looks a bit more professional. If you're a lady like a, a bag, a handbag or something would be fine. And so the first thing is to make sure you have your portfolio which I have here and Christina has over there. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, yeah. let me get it. Let me get it. So mine's like a black one, it's very simple, yeah. nothing crazy. Yeah, and I mean the portfolio just like really over, like it's like each project is one or two pages at the max. And in my portfolio, I also have like an architecture award that I've won. So another important thing is to bring multiple copies of your resume because if you're interviewing with more than one person, most people are prepared with everything you have printed out anyways, but just in case, like have that ready. So this is kind of like the basic mm. thing. Um, I like to bring in our architecture school, we had to do like some books that we've done. Like this is like just one project. This is one project. This is my master thesis. And if they ask me to like show them about a project, I'll rather look through one of these than like the five images that I have in my portfolio of that project. I also bring my diploma, which, um, Nobody's ever asked for, which is really weird because that thing was expensive. So I don't know why nobody wants to see it. 
what? I've never heard of that. Nobody's <laughs> ever looked at my diploma ever. Like I could be lying. And I like to bring a notebook also, just in case I want to take notes and you know. Uh, so I'm prepared in case yeah. they they like tell me some important information I can write down. So uh, just like Selena, I'm also I also like to be over prepared than under prepared, and she makes a good point with bringing extra resumes because it's happened before where like like two or like one or two people may be interviewing you, and then like like the president of the firm like decides to walk in or something, or or somebody from the department decides to walk in and like sit in on the interview, and so you would like to be prepared to like be able to offer them like a resume for them to look at and to take notes on as well. Mm -hmm. So on the back of my resume, I actually like, so like you only bring like one or two images of each project, right? Um, but sometimes like I'll have to like just choose, like I'll to, like to condense my portfolio, I'll take some things out. But on the back, like the way back of my portfolio, cause it's like, uh, let me show you that it's just like, you know, you can just like slip, like you can just slip papers in and stuff. Uh, so on the way back, I'll like put all the extras just in case if they're like, well, I wish you would have shown this or shown that. And I'm like, well, give me a second. <laughs> I have it for you. <laughs> and then I just like pull it out and they're just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, in terms of, like, presentation and how I want the order of my portfolio, like, that's set. So, like, it's okay to, like, improvise a little, mm -hmm. I think, during an interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of during an interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> I was like, are you going <laughs> to? So, um, something that somebody once told me that, like, really, really stuck with me is, like, you can teach a person to be, like, a good worker or you can teach a person, like, if you're only doing residential, you can teach them to do healthcare. Like that, those things are teachable, but things that like are not easily changed are like your personality. And a lot of people, I feel like, get really nervous in interviews, and they just focus like solely on like their work. But like everybody went to school, like everybody did the same degree. Like I don't know. I feel like your personality can bring like push you past other applicants with if everybody has the same qualification. Um, so it's important to like never interrupt like the person interviewing you or like, you know, just have good manners and be super respectful and kind of like joke also like one of the um, job applications I looked at, the one that actually just emailed me today and their job application application, they actually said like, we want somebody that can laugh about themselves and like be like fit in with the team and stuff. So I feel like in an interview, that's where you shine through also. Also, like, a firm I just interviewed at, they were, like, telling us, telling me about, like, the employees or whatever, but it was super cute on their website. They had, like, pictures of dogs that worked there. And so, like, in the interview, they were like, yeah, we have eight to ten employees. And I was like, and two dogs. And I, like, laughed about that. And I felt like that kind of, like, lightened the mood and kind of made the conversation go easier. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think that people, like, definitely want to work with people who are more easygoing, you know, mm -hmm. than than somebody who's not I think that's like the hardest part like people who don't like who have a hard time like communicating maybe or just like are very like like quiet it's like hard to be like working on a team mm -hmm. with people like that even if they have to teach you an extra thing or two mm -hmm. um they would rather do that than than you know Mm. So I guess if you if you are <laughs> they would rather do that okay. yeah I guess if you are like a shy person or you know that like Maybe you're a bit socially awkward or something, but um, you go into the interview prepared for that as well. And you kind of think of like, because some people get like really anxious about being like uh, yourself around strangers. So maybe you can even write down like or think about things that you can say that can lighten the mood ahead of time. Just to prepare like in those like aspects that maybe aren't your strengths. So there's about like, you know, eight to ten questions that they generally ask in an interview. But we're just going to highlight like a few really common ones that um, is almost like a it's almost like a given. Um, so they always want to know about your experience and what you did on your previous projects. For example, like what phase were you working on and like what were you responsible for? Like some people like on larger projects, like some people did like the full 
documents for like staircases you know so they know like every inch in detail or like or like bathrooms right mm -hmm. so like talk about that like and like be confident about it and just like tell them that like yeah I might not know about like how that classroom was designed but I can tell you all about this staircase in this project mm -hmm. Uh, so if you can, uh, beforehand, when you're looking at the company's website, sometimes they show, like, the, sometimes they show, like, project images, like, not just renderings, but actual, like, documents. So if they do do that, then you might be able to identify what program they're using. So for, for here in, in, I guess, the Northeast, at least, like, Revit is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. So a very common question would be like, what's your experience with Revit? And like, what have, like, what projects have you done with it? And, you know, they want to like see what that looks like. Um, so I'm a lot better at Revit now than I was before. Um, but so I just had to sell myself on like my other strengths, which is something else that they ask. Um, like, what are your strengths, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but also back to the um, program thing. So yeah. if you if you don't know a program and you know that that firm uses that program primarily, usually it's also in the job description. Um, don't lie about like what programs you use, because actually the firm that we worked together, Christina, in the interview, they pulled out a computer and was like, show us that you know how to use this program, because like we've had people lie to us. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to go there yeah. and like click and yeah. like you do like something really quick. And they're like, OK, we believe you. We just had to check. So make sure that you are prepared yeah. if they um, you know, if you go to the interview and you're like, yeah, of course I know Revit, and they pull out Revit, and you're like, <laughs> don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah, no, you can't, you can't, you can't oversell yourself that much. <laughs> um, that, which, that actually happened where we, where they hired somebody at our last company together, and he said that he knew all these programs, and, like, after like a few weeks they realized that he didn't know anything that's who they and, probably like, he was asking like yeah and i think that's when they started like going like okay like you have to show us this you have to show us that like how do you do this how do you do that just like very simple things mm. so i guess if you are gonna like lie about it you know you better like do your research and like like learn it before you <laughs> watch go YouTube tutorials <laughs> Watch a whole bunch of YouTube tutorials before you go. Mm -hmm. um, download some trial versions. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely prepare if you um, want that yeah. job. <laughs> and the last question that they will always, always, always ask is, why are you interested in working for them? And be creative. Yeah. Because everyone's going to like, and don't say it's like money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm hungry <laughs> and poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. But, um... <laughs> Just to clarify, I never said that, guys. <laughs> Is that one of your mistakes? No. <laughs> They're sirens. Yeah. This is what it's like living in West Philly. <laughs> there was also 10 gunshots yesterday, oh. like two miles from here. Oh, nice. In Francisville. I don't know where that is, but, you know. It's just one of the reasons why I left um, Philly. <laughs> <laughs> so selena for the questions of what are your strengths and for why you want to work for said company what answers did you give i feel like i'm being interviewed right now <laughs> um i feel like my strengths are also like <laughs> i feel like my strengths are often like i'm really efficient an efficient worker and i'm really good at multitasking so like having like new information because I feel like there's always people walk around the office like oh can you do this for me real quick and then you get like off track but like I'm really good at like balancing like multiple mm -hmm. things um definitely efficient is a really good one I'm really good at teamwork and really good at communicating um if you haven't seen that video about like why Germans are so direct go watch that one because I feel like that's actually helped me in my work environment <laughs> when you're having teamwork um <clears throat> And why I want to work at the company, usually I like say something like, I think this is a perfect company to like grow with. So like they want to know that you're going to stay there for a while. So you're like, well, maybe I'm a really young architect, but I really want to learn a lot. And I think this company is the perfect opportunity to grow. So if it's like a small company, you could say like, well, I think a small company is the perfect place to grow because you're going to have access to like every phase of every project. 
And if you're interviewing for a big company, you might say, well, a big company is good to grow with because there's just so many different projects going on and like there's so much to learn and so many people to like learn from. So kind of just also using like what the company is and saying like, oh, that's like perfect for me. And then also say how you can be perfect for the company, where it's like, well, I'm a young architect, which a lot of times people want like maybe a bit more experience. You could say like, well, like young architects still need to be molded. So like I can learn exactly how you want me to learn these things. Whereas like an older, like a senior architect is already set in his or her way. So like they're going to have a harder time adapting to like how the ne like the other company does things. So it's just like about selling yourself and like um, using what you have, even if it's a disadvantage, using it as an advantage in the interview. Would you add something? Well, I guess like, uh, the only thing is, I, I guess like for my strength, it would just be like, I'm extremely detail oriented, hmm, that's also <laughs> a good thing. which I think that some people can see. Yeah. Which, but I mean, it depends on who you ask, right? Some people see it as like a con, um, because like you could be too detail oriented, I guess. But at the last company I worked for, like they, that's the one thing that they kept praising me about that. They're like, that's that's what they love. Like they mm. need people who are detail oriented. And I guess that also goes with like the size of firms and stuff and the resources available. Like I think that because this was a much bigger firm, like they wanted to pay attention to every little detail, you know, mm. because there's like the work is more divided up between people. Uh, so everything gets a little more love. I, I feel like in every interview or like, they, they want you to talk more, like they're, they're going to ask you things, um, like if you just answer straight away the question, like, oh, like, um, I don't know, like, have you worked in healthcare before? And you're like, yes. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. don't do that. Like, actually, like, prepare your answers and like, have like, like, they want to hear, they want to hear from you. They want to get to know, like, your personality and stuff like that. So like, don't say yes or no answers yeah. or don't give short answers. Yeah, like, even though it's an interview, I think that they really want, like, an organic conversation, mm -hmm. um, like, so that they can see, like, your personality and just, like, how you think, mm -hmm. you know, and how you talk to people, like, people, like, personable people. So the last thing um, <laughs> to talk about, which actually Christina, like, taught me about a few days ago is, like, what to do <laughs> after the interview. <laughs> so... <laughs> Like, I never had to do this before because every time I interviewed for a place, they were, like, really desperate for somebody, and they didn't, like, it was for an intern architect, which I feel like they spend a little less time in the interview process. Um, so I had an offer by the time I got home every time, so I didn't know you were supposed to send a thank you email, like, a thank you for the interview email, because I never, like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Always, always, always. Guys, this is your deciding factor on a job, unless you're Selena and gets hired on the spot. <laughs> always, always, always send a thank you email. Uh, you could talk, you could just say thank you for the interview, like the opportunity to interview with you, to learn more about this company, or, you know, maybe you guys like really bonded on talking about one of the projects or like, you know, anything. I don't care. Cats, like just thank you. It was great look forward to hearing from you soon <laughs> yeah I think that kind of also changes per country because like Americans are really really into small talk whereas like oh like I enjoyed our conversation about this like it's like the the people that are always like how are you but don't care um so that's like you kind of want to suck up a little more but I feel like for in Germany I didn't really write like that much and I didn't say I look forward to hearing from you because like I don't know, I think that's like a little bit of a cultural difference. So I had to kind of alter my email from like what you would expect in the States versus what you would expect in Germany. So now we're going to talk about some mistakes we've made um, during the interview, which I mean, I guess they're not really big mistakes because like the ones I've made at least. So I think it's fine. Um, what are you right. trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> trying to say I made big mistakes no I'm just saying I feel like like I don't know I feel like I was always prepared enough that like when I went to the interview it didn't like flop so a mistake that I've made um 
pretty recently was that I don't think I sold myself well enough where like I just graduated from my master's and I never worked in Europe before and then like when the guy said like you've never worked in Europe before or in Germany before and that that's kind of like a weak point in my um in my like resume I should have been more confident and been like well I worked like four years and I just finished my master's and you know like other people that just finished their master's probably have like a lot less experience than I do so even if that experience is not in you know this country it's still experience like I feel like I, would have, I should have sold myself a little bit better um yeah you tell them you tell yeah them girl <laughs> I don't know, I guess I just agreed with him, so I was like, well, I guess you're right. <laughs> so. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. So Bye. I was just like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I should have, like, fought back and would have been like, no, I'm, like, I'm completely qualified for this job. So I think that confidence, uh, yeah. like, lacked in my <laughs> last interview. So one of the common mistakes I did in the beginning of, like, the start of my interviews um, like before I had enough practice was I was always too nervous. So like it was just, which isn't, which isn't good. Cause like, you know, like it's hard for conversations to flow. Um, but like, you know, I, like after a few interviews, like you, you get like practice, which is something else that you should be doing. Even if like, this may not be like your dream firm, but going on interviews mm -hmm. is always, always good for practice. So I guess that's about it. That's it for this video. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that our tips were helpful. Um, if you have some other tips, make sure to comment down below and let us know because uh, we are also always wanting to grow. So if you have tips for us, that would be super helpful, especially right now where we're interviewing or, you know, trying to interview. And, I, you know, I have an interview coming up, so if you have something for me, let me know. <laughs> um. So stay tuned, because we also want to talk about some portfolio tips in our next video. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!